Hello, I'm Mrs Holgar. Thank you for clicking on this video. In today's video, what we're going to go through is the annotated version of In Mrs Tilcher's Class by Carolyn Duffy. What I suggest you do when you're going through this video is take notes using either a notebook or annotate the poem itself by using highlighters, pencils or coloured pen. So the first part of the poem says, you could travel up the Blue Nile with your finger tracing the route while Mrs Tilcher chanted the scenery. Tana, Ethiopia, Khartoum, Aswan. The first part you're going to highlight is the word you. This is a personal pronoun. So remember personal pronouns create a chatting tone, engages the reader to help them experience the memory. Personal pronouns are the same as direct address. By saying you, it includes the reader further. It's saying that the reader could travel up the Blue Nile. It's a metaphor. This compares the children's journey of growing up to an adventure along the Nile. So it's all very exciting. It takes you far away from reality. It's a long sentence. It goes all the way from line one to line three. And this mirrors the long journey the children take through childhood. So that's a nice and easy one to illustrate because it will get you some easy marks in your set text assessment. The next word is chanted. The word choice of chanted gives the teacher's voice a comforting and happy feeling. When the teacher's chanting, it's clear that the poetic speaker feels safe. Lastly, we're going to highlight the long list of one word sentences or short sentences. So this mimics the patience, the way that the teacher pauses after saying things in the class to make sure that the children understand. And these are also all the places that perhaps the children are transported to when they're learning about the world. The poem goes on to say that for an hour, then a skittle of milk, the chalky pyramids rubbed into dust. A window opened with a long pole, the laugh of a bell swung by a running child. So they're taken away from this magical place elsewhere and they're now back in the classroom and it's very sensory. We're going to highlight that for an hour because this is a chatting tone. The inversion of that shows the day is broken down and it's very structured just like it would be in primary school. Now remember inversion is when you would start a sentence normally saying the cat sat on the hat and then you would change around the structure of that sentence to emphasise a certain word. So um, on top of the hat sat the cat. So instead of the cat being highlighted, the hat is. Here is that for an hour. So there's an emphasis on that. It shows the structure. The second part we're going to highlight is a skittle of milk. This is a nice one to remember for your 10 or 8 mark question. It's a metaphor. It compares the bottles to bowling pins. So it suggests fun and excitement of time spent in class. The children enjoy being there. It is just like it would be in a bowling alley. Lots of fun for them. Chalky pyramids rubbed into dust suggest magical's passing of time, something ending and being lost, just like a story of a faraway place. A window opened with a long pole is word choice. It brings action from the poem, so it turns imagination into reality. They are in the classroom and this movement brings them back into the current time. The laugh of a bell is personification. Bells cannot laugh. Remember, personification is a type of imagery where an inanimate object is given human-like qualities. So the bell is laughing here. The personification projects the child's laughter onto it, which creates a happy atmosphere. The next stanza says, This was better than home. Enthralling books. The classroom glowed like a sweet shop. Sugar paper, coloured shapes, Brady and Henley faded like the faint, uneasy smudge of a mistake. We see a turning point. This is suggested by the short, short sentence. So it does suggest safety and happiness, but it also gives an informal tone yet again. So this was better than home. This child feels so safe that they would prefer to be here than at home. Enthralling books is word choice of enthralling. It suggests interested, absorbed by the literature that they're learning. And it's also a short sentence which emphasises the strength of their feeling. Enthralling books is very confident. It's very forthcoming, just as this speaker is confident that they enjoy this learning process. 
The next sign says that the classroom glowed like a sweet shop. This is a simile. Now remember, a simile is a piece of imagery where one thing is likened to another using the word like or as. So this simile shows the temptation, wonder and delight. So it triggers interest. Just like a student, a pupil would be very interested in a sweet shop. They are distracted. They're overwhelmed with their feelings. So too are the children in this classroom overwhelmed with their interest. Brady and Henley are highlighted here to give some context. They are serial killers in England who preyed on young children. So it brings a sense of darkness into the poem now. It contrasts against the glowing sweet shop and it brings in the sense of darkness from the outside world. However, these figures faded like the faint, flimsy smudge of a mistake. So there's juxtaposition of the security and dangerous of the Moore murderers. Okay, so juxtaposition is just a fancy way of saying that there's conflict, there's contrast. So the, the nice, safe classroom is contrasted against the mention of Brady and Hindley on the outside. And there's a simile. So these people are fading. So the power of a loving environment removes their fear. It protects them from these Moore murderers. The poetic speaker says, Mrs. Tilcher loved you. Some mornings you found she'd left a gold star by your name, the scent of a pencil slowly, carefully shaved, and a xylophone's nonsense heard from another form. Mrs. Tilcher loved you. This is a short sentence. It's a very simple fact, an easy thing for children to understand. It's impactful and it's simple. Just to emphasise the fact that she understands that the love this teacher has for her is simple. The word choice of gold star suggests a positive atmosphere. The sense of magic is still there and it also links back to the setting of this being in a classroom. There's a sense of encouragement from the teacher, which this poetic speaker revels in. The scent of a pencil slowly, carefully shaved is a list of adverbs. Now remember, adverbs are adjectives on how you describe doing the verb, which is the doing verb. So carefully, slowly, prolongs the lines and mimics the slow act of sharpening a pencil is a universal memory that every speaker will have from their childhood so it includes them further. An xylophone's nonsense heard from another form. This is personification. Now remember, an xylophone cannot hear things. However, in this case, it does. It implies that it hasn't been mastered yet, but sounds fun and appealing, much like life in this classroom is fun and appealing. The poem goes on to say, over the Easter term, the inky tadpoles changed from commas into exclamation marks. Three frogs hopped in the playground, freed by a dance, followed by a line of kids jumping and croaking. There's word choice within that first line, over the Eastern term, a time of growth and regeneration for Easter that signals a turning point in the poem as the speaker grows himself. So Easter, when you think about Easter, it's daffodils, lambs, it's a place of birth, of growing up, just like this poetic speaker seems to grow up over the Easter term. Inky tadpoles change from commas and exclamation mark. So it's a metaphor. A metaphor is similar to a simile where, as imagery, one thing is likened to another. But instead of using words like like or as, the thing being compared is something else. So these children are inky tadpoles changing from commas and exclamation marks. So it represents the children growing up. The punctuation links to growing up and links to the setting of the learning. Three frogs hopped in the playground. Hopped is word choice. It's fun and playful. There's innocence still intact where they enjoy games and they still play. A dunce is a word you might not be familiar with. Again, this is word choice. It's a stupid person. It's an old fashioned slur. It's a very negative thing. This has negative connotations. And lastly, jumping and croaking from the kids. So the word choice links the boys' voices breaking. So the boys that are growing up are hitting puberty sound, just like frogs who are croaking. It brings in a new feeling of change as puberty approaches. The stanza carries on by saying that the boys who are jumping and croaking away from the lunch queue. A rough boy told you how you were born. You kicked him but stared at your parents appalled when you got home. 
a rough boy told you how you were born. Now this is the turning point in the poem, it's word choice. The rough boy suggests sheltered background, snobbish behaviour. She looks down at this boy. She's also immature. There's a lack of knowledge in what happens in the real world. And this shows that her innocence is now changing. She's moving away from her innocence as she's learning about things outside of the classroom. However, her immediate response is, you kicked him. So this is a minor sentence prior to the comma. It evokes her disbelief perhaps her fear of the unknown. The word choice of kick suggests violence in her reaction, shows how violently this new fact had changed her way of thinking. The last part of this stanza which we'll approach is appalled. This is word choice, it means shocked, but suddenly shocked. And there's a use of parenthesis. Now remember, parenthesis is when a minor sentence is put in between two commas or two dashes or even brackets almost like a sandwich and it's to add extra information so she's adding how appalled she is at this new news so the parenthesis places the word in the middle of the line adding emphasis to her horror and her familiar and safe world disintegrates in front of her eyes there's complex sentences there's sorts of commas it's quite long and this is to highlight the complex thoughts of the poetic speaker The last stanza says, that feverish July, the air tasted of electricity, a tangible alarm made you always untidy, hot, fractious under the heavy, sexy sky. You asked her how you were born and Mrs. Tilcher smiled. We're going to highlight feverish July first. This is word choice. It conveys the feeling of being flustered. It's an agitated move just as she feels agitated after hearing the news of where babies come from. It also suggests illness, heat or even excitement. So just like she goes into puberty, there's a mixture of all these emotions. The air tasted of electricity is the next one we will highlight. There's imagery in this. So something new and dangerous in the air, a new buzz about the poetic speaker. She can feel something about to happen just like she can taste the electricity in the air. And this is brought about by the change or realisation of where babies come from. So she's almost excited for growing up now or she can feel the power in growing up. A tangible alarm will highlight that. That's again, word choice again. It compares change of laughing bell to the speaker. So it links the stress or excitement that the child perceives in physical terms. An alarm is a warning of what is ahead. And it links back to the setting of the school. That this alarm is indicating that she's about to go through a change herself. She's going to go through puberty. She's going to understand more about the adult world. Untidy hot fractious under the heavy sky. Untidy, hot and fractious, we're going to highlight. This is a list and emphasises the speaker being uncomfortable, even physically, just as they will be during physical changes of puberty. Heavy and sexy sky, we've already highlighted, and this is a pathetic fallacy. Now, a pathetic fallacy is a sense of imagery, whereas the weather represents how you feel so for instance if you are sad a writer might describe the rain outside and how that weather represents your own feelings it represents your innermost worries here the sky is heavy and sexy so it links to this poetic speaker's feelings this burden of new knowledge with heavy and sexy refers to the speaker's own sexual awakening she learns about sex word choice suggests a storm is building and with that storm comes puberty Mrs Tilcher smiled and then turned away. Reports were handed out. You ran through the gates, impatient to be grown as the sky split open into a thunderstorm. So Mrs Tilcher turned away. So the security and help the teacher usually offers is no longer there. The enjambment shows the detachment the speaker feels now as the teacher turns away. There's also a sense of betrayal there. She trusts her teacher to tell her everything, but now her teacher turns her back on her and she feels like she has to discover these things on her own. Reports were handed out. This contrast is stanza one and two. Instead of the pupils exploring magical worlds provided by Mrs Tilcher, reality sets in with school reports. Mrs Tilcher's role has become ordinary and a matter of fact. She's no longer this magical teacher that makes them feel safe and whisks them away to magical worlds. She's handing out the reports. The short sentence emphasises this. The realisation that she's not special or magical 
comes about with a short sentence being blunt and impactful. You again is a second person pronoun and a direct address. It's informal, the speaker is speaking directly to the reader here and it makes the poem alongside its themes universal and relatable. However, the poetic speaker runs through the gate, impatient to be grown. This is parenthesis again, we're adding extra information into this sentence as if it were a sandwich. This creates an emphasis of the speaker's feelings. The fear has melted away about puberty and it's turned into this eagerness to experience life. The final line says that the sky splits open into a thunderstorm. This is our second use of a pathetic fallacy in this poem and it again links to the speaker's feelings. It's a metaphor. Compared with the dramatic feelings about growing up, it was scary and exciting. The word choice of split is breaking, it's damaging, there's a loss of innocence. She can no longer return to the past or her own childhood now as she grows into a young woman. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for pausing at certain points and creating notes for yourself. I hope this has helped you understand Caroline Duffy's and Mrs Tilcher's class further. Please remember to like and subscribe. Have a good day.